Welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest here, the capital city of Hungary, situated on the two sides of the Danube River. I hope everybody is having a fantastic week wherever you are in the world and you're looking forward to a great weekend. Hi Shivani, hi Flower Sun, hi Police Crime, hi Tunde, Irene, nice to see many students in the class. We are focusing on IELTS speaking part three, the more challenging questions of the speaking interview following the cue card part two. While we wait for some more of your peers, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com. That's academicenglishhelp.com. For lots more help with the academic version of the exam, visit us there and join our premium package. And for the general version of the test, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. That's general IELTS help.com. Gunkai Ren, Preeti for Dobbs. Nice to see many of our members joining in as well. Students, our websites look like this. This is the academic at aehelp.com. Click that big red button to join the premium package get loads of video lesson materials for all sections with me and other experts, teachers and examiners. As well, for general outs, you're looking for the green background at gielts.help.com. Click that big red button to join there. Hi, Roshni. Hi, Preeti. Good to see more members in the class. Students, uh, if you have questions about our products or the exam, Send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com, and I will gladly answer your questions. Good evening to you, Amit Rana in India. This is the last class for this week. We will not have classes until February 5th. That's next week, Thursday, literally one week from now. So uh, no classes for the next six days. And then next Thursday, I will be back uh, with speaking part one. Okay. Usually we have the classes at least four or five times a week, but I'm out of the office for a bit. So a little bit of a break there. Nevertheless, I will be releasing some HD speaking lessons during that time. So make sure you check back. And I will also be posting uh, some um, task one and task two sample essays on the YouTube channel. Aisha <laughs> <just> says, why? <laughs> well, I've got some things to do, Aisa, but I will be back. All right. <clears throat> so, students, this is uh, a speaking class. So make sure to speak and repeat. Listen carefully to what I say and repeat what I say, copying my intonation and my enunciation, okay, as closely as possible. Okay, and Gunkai Ren says, keep practicing so that you stay on track. Absolutely, Gunkai Ren. All right, so uh, maybe some of you remember uh, that we had a cue card part two just the other day about your favorite dessert, right? And uh, we chose a fruit salad for our favorite dessert. Now we will continue with part three. And in the exam, the examiner will say, for part three, I will ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. Let's talk about sweets and candy. I thought we would finish this week with a very sweet topic. So we're going to talk about some sweets and some candy. All right. Let's get into it, students. Let's get into it. In general, have people's consumption of candy and other sweets increased or decreased over the last few decades? Okay, so what do you think? Have people's candy eating habits increased or decreased? Now the examiner will only ask you in one way the question. They do not paraphrase questions like I just did. At most, they might repeat the question, okay? So, in general, have people's consumption of candy and other sweets increased or decreased 
over the last few decades. Ped Ram says, compared to the last 50 years, it has experienced significant changes, mostly because of the advancement of technology. There are now various options with different flavors for different tastes. Okay, Ped Ram. My favorite candy is a mixture of tropical fruits like the dessert that I explained earlier. Gunkai Ren, I'm not sure where the coronavirus comes into play here. But okay. Uh, Love Preet Singh says hi. Still waiting for some more. Uh, notice, uh, students, this is a present perfect. So have candy uh, consumption or has candy consumption increased or decreased? That's a present perfect sentence. So you need to create a nice full sentence. Sharing is caring says increased, but they are more careful. I'm not sure what you mean. Sharing is caring, that's too short. Okay. Aisha says, in comparison to 20 years ago, individuals' consumption of confectionery has decreased. Okay. Explain that to me, Aisha. What do you mean it's decreased? How much did people eat 20 years ago on average? How much did they eat now? Ferdob says, in my opinion, individuals' consumption of candy and other sweets have increased over the last few decades. Taylor Reese is asking, well, how am I supposed to know? Guess, Taylor Reese, okay? Um, Roshni says, without a doubt, it has increased drastically these days than a few decades before because truffles and candy have a good taste and it's easily accessible in shops nearby. For example, I buy chocolate four times a week. Very good, Roshni. Okay. Um, Fad says, well, decreased, of course, because most diseases spread nowadays, so people are afraid of ingredients and sugar levels. Good. See, different opinions. It's totally fine. Girls and guys, there's no right and wrong on the aisles. Whether you say increased or decreased doesn't matter. It just matters how well you explain yourself. Okay. So... I'd like to believe that the consumption of confectionery and other sugars have decreased, or let's paraphrase that, have become less over the past 20 years. As these days, people are more health conscious and are aware of the dangers of excessive sugar. I think back in the 90s, people ate chocolate bars every day, but these days, most people eat a chocolate bar once a week. Okay, so here's an interesting tip, students. The truth doesn't matter on the aisles, okay? Your answer just needs to be believable. Okay? You need to take a position, explain it, and give an example. Okay, remember we talked about the fruit salad? This is why I've changed to eating fruit salads, okay? Because that's what we talked about. So repeat after me. In general, have people's consumption of candy and other sweets increased or decreased over the last few decades? Last few decades means 20 
or 30 years. Okay? Repeat after me. I'd like to believe that the consumption of confectionaries and other sugars have become less over the past 20 years, as these days people are more health conscious and are aware of the dangers of excessive sugar. I think back in the 90s, people ate chocolate bars every day, but these days most people eat a chocolate bar once a week. This is why I've changed to eating fruit salads. Okay? All right. So, Amira says, generally, eating sweets has dramatically increased over the last number of years. 20 years ago, people ate just fruit as dessert, but now there are many different flavored chocolates and processed cocoa that people consume every day. Um, notice how, because the question is asking about increase, decreased, immediately I move to quantitative language. In the 90s, people ate chocolate bars every day. But these days, most people eat a chocolate bar once a week. So this is another tip for this kind of question. Okay? When the question is asking about increase, decrease, or change, Okay, you must immediately think of quantitative language. It doesn't have to be the truth, it just has to be believable. Okay, so that's my example. Before, one in ten people, now every other person. Okay, that would be an example. Does that make sense? Okay. So quantitative language, okay? Immediately think of numbers, numbers. All right. Uh, Mary, Sai, Mary, Rob, I'm not sure what you're thanking me for. Perhaps I missed your earlier comment, but you're welcome. Okay. All right, students, so quantitative language. If it's increased, decreased, or changed, think of quantitative language, okay? All right, let's keep going. Uh, can you elaborate? Follow-up question, can you elaborate? Hmm, okay, can I elaborate? Can I say more? Do it, students, elaborate, tell me more. Okay, so again, my answer is I think it's decreased because people are more health conscious. In the 90s, people ate chocolate bars every day, but these days they're eating it just once a week. Chocolate bars, on average, I prefer eating fruit salads. Now, the examiner says, can you elaborate? So can you tell me more? You always have to be able to elaborate. Don't just repeat. Okay. All right. Ferdov says, yeah, nowadays many individuals are aware of healthy lifestyles and people have been trying to change their eating habits from confectionaries to natural sweet fruits like mango, bananas, and pineapples. Very good, Ferdovs. That's an excellent elaboration. Watch your spelling on the yeah, but... It's a very nice elaboration, okay? Ped Ram says, sure, in the past, especially before the millennia, technology wasn't that advanced to make artificial taste like mixture of banana and mint. It's quite odd, but my brother is absolutely obsessed with this taste. Okay, good, Ped Ram, because you're going for the other side. Very good. Muhammad Fazal, you have a good idea. You just need to put that into a better sentence. So Muhammad says, uh, gaining obesity, it's becoming obese by eating too many sweets. Okay. Aisha says, of course, yes. Nowadays, people fear uh, diseases such as diabetes. 
Uh, physicians predict that by 2025, one in every 10 people will suffer from this illness. So people are controlling their consumption of candies. Very nice elaboration, Aisha. That's a good solid band eight elaboration. All right. Uh, Rajat Gupta, same idea. So Rajat Gupta says, yes, of course, with the increasing number of diseases from bad eating habits, people are developing serious concerns and are turning towards good uh, diet, good nutrition. Nice, okay? I corrected and expressed it more accurately, Rajat, but you're on the right idea, okay? Um, yes, of course. Uh, it is common to see the negative results of excessive sugar diets people had <clears throat> in the past 20 or so years with the uh, prevalence of diabetes and obesity. So nowadays people want to avoid this so they pay more attention to their daily intake of sugar. Okay. So here we go, students. Uh, can you elaborate? Yes, of course. It's common to see the negative results of excessive sugar diets people had in the past 20 years or so uh, with the prevalence of diabetes and obesity. So nowadays, people want to avoid this. So they pay more attention to their daily intake of sugars. Okay. Uh, prevalence means that it's uh, commonly observable, okay? Commonly observable, that's prevalence, okay? When you see new words like this, write them down and learn them. Repeat after me, prevalence, prevalence, okay? Diabetes is when our body is no longer able to uh, process sugar properly. There's type 1, type 2 diabetes. Type 1, people are born with it. Insulin deficiency, type 2, people develop it from bad eating habits. And obesity means a person is way too overweight. Okay? All right. Next question. Too many sweets can have bad outcomes for people's health. Do you agree with this statement? Why or why not? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Make connections if you can to what you've just said. Include quantitative language if you can. Use complex sentences with cause and effect. Condition. Use compound sentences with and, so but, nor, for. And paraphrase as much as possible. All right, let's see what you come up with. Violet Nguyen says, I am I'm in 100% agreement. Violet Nguyen, the sentence that you're looking for is, I'm in 100% agreement with this statement. Okay, that's how you want to start that, Violet. So I'm or I 100% agree, that's the other way, but not I'm, okay? I 100% agree with this statement, okay? That's the other way. Because science has said that sugar is like a drug. Sugar uh, makes people control themselves during eating, if we eat too many sugars, we will have diabetes and high blood sugar. And also uh, our blood pressure will be affected, right? 
Uh, Gunjan Bot says, indeed, I agree with this statement. Too much of anything always leads to dire results. So, uh, so do too many sweets. High intake of sugar uh, increases the chances of becoming obese and getting diabetes. Okay. Lakshmi Karki says, yes, I agree with this statement because too many sweets can affect our health. All right. And students, always um, plan to expand. So always add more. Uh, visualize. Okay. So visualize. In this case, people who eat too many sweets. So here, we've talked about diabetes, we've talked about obesity, a lot of you have mentioned that. What are some of the other negative results of eating too many sweets or too much sugar? I'm sure that you can think of some other ones as well. Let's see if any of you get it. So um, picture a kid that's eaten too much candy for too many years. Uh, what happens? Okay, so a lot of people are saying becoming fat and diabetes, but there are other negatives as well. Okay, Mr. Beck says, yes, I absolutely approve of this statement because people not only catch very developed, they don't catch them, they develop them. Mr. Beck, you catch a cold, a viral or a bacterial disease, you can catch it, but a disease that comes from within our bodies like diabetes, we develop them. Okay, uh, Gunkai Ren, very good. It's tooth decay, cavities, cavities, Charlie said, cavities. Yes, so expand on what you said. Um, can uh, too much sugar lead to obesity and diabetes? But it also results in hyperactivity and tooth decay. It is commonly known that children who eat sweets often get lots of cavities. Okay, cavities are the holes in your teeth, okay, when you get holes in your teeth, all right. Uh, as well, their teachers complain that they are hyperactive, okay. All right, so expand, visualize, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, um, so... Repeat after me. Too many sweets can have bad outcomes for people's health. Do you agree with this statement? I'm in 100% agreement with this statement. Not only can too much sugar lead to obesity and diabetes, as I had just mentioned, but it also results in hyperactivity and tooth decay. It is commonly known that children who eat sweets often get lots of cavities. As well, their teachers complain that they're hyperactive. These kinds of words will definitely bump up your lexical resource scores and this kind of grammar will bump up your grammar range and accuracy scores, okay? So your goal is express yourself, keep adding more and more information, link information inside of your answers and among your answers with correlative subordinating conjunctions, okay? Rajveer Vora says, yes, I agree. It triggers diabetes uh, with people that have too much sugar. It results in permanent damage of the organs along with the intake of drugs like insulin. People will become prone to infections. Good. Amira says, not only that, but it also is proven that 80% of British toddlers have teeth problems because of too many sweets. Very good, Amira. I like your quantitative language. Fantastic. Good job so far, students. It is a sweet topic, but it's so sad. Why? 
why does sugar have to be so bad for us when it's so delicious? Everything in moderation. Okay, let's switch gears a little bit. Next question. Certain types of candies and cakes can be very expensive. What do you think contributes to the high prices of some confectionaries? Confectionaries are basically cakes and candies. Okay, so if this is a new word for you, then learn it. Uh, a cake shop is also called a confectionery or a chocolate cake shop that sells chocolates and cakes can be called a confectionery. So certain types of candies and cakes can be very expensive. What do you think contributes to the high prices of some confectionaries? Let's see what you come up with this. Let's see what you answer to this question. Tunde Adeyemi says, I like to believe that the high cost of some confectionaries is due to the high demand for these delicious items, which are a limited production. Uh, Tunde, time is 26 minutes in the video. I changed your grammar a fair bit to make it more natural and more accurate. Okay, so check your time, write it down, 26 minutes. Go back and look at that later, why I did what I did. Okay. FUD says they contain more natural ingredients. FUD, okay, good, but use the question in your answer. So I think some types of cakes and candies cost a lot of money because they contain natural ingredients which are hard to find or to produce. Okay, FUD? So always use the question, FUD in your answer to give a full, complete sentence, okay? Students always aim for that complete sentence. Use the question, at least, okay? So this is another tip, I'll write it up here. Okay, so never give half answers, although we do that in real life conversation, don't do that on the IELTS, okay? So never give what's called half answers. Always use the question, paraphrase it as much as possible. Uh, <clears throat> in your answer. Okay, super important to get nice fluency scores. All right, nice fluency scores. Okay, <clears throat> so we have some more answers coming up. Amit Segawala says, I believe that cake should be expensive because it is harmful for health. In a high price range, only a few people will prefer to eat it, so it can be helpful for people. Okay, um, there's a problem with that answer, Amit Sega. Uh, you're answering of why should uh, cakes be expensive, but that's not what the question's asking you. The question's at saying that certain types of candies and cakes can be very expensive. What do you think contributes to the high prices? So I don't think people make cakes expensive so that only a few people will buy them. Okay, so you're answering a different question there. Amit Sega, and you would get a low score for your answer, even though you're using good English, it's considered poor communication. Okay, careful with that, All right? Sadhana Sa says, I think because people are aware of health issues, certain types of bakery products must use good quality ingredients that result in high costs. Sadhana, not bad. Um, good quality ingredients. Your missing word is ingredients. Okay. Uh, Charlie Sin says, I think they are expensive because they are made with expensive ingredients and these types of confectionaries are in high demand. Uh, can anybody give me an example of a, um, of a, a confectionery that's uh, expensive because of the ingredients and it's difficult to make? Rajveer Vora says the ingredients required to prepare candies like natural flowers, which are extracted from fruits and other resources, 
uh, can be uh, difficult to process and take a lot of time and labor. Hence, it adds to the cost. Good. Okay. So, <clears throat> the reason for the high cost of some cakes and candies is due to the pricey ingredients like natural vanilla and the extensive labor involved in making it. One such dessert that comes to mind are macarons. There we go. One of my favorites. Why do they have to be so delicious and so expensive? Macarons. So the reason for, high, for the high cost of some cakes and candies is due to the pricey ingredients like natural vanilla and the extensive labor involved in making it. One such dessert that comes to mind are macarons. In fact, that type of dessert even takes a lot of practice to make well. I've never tried it, but I've seen people make macarons, and it takes quite a bit of practice. A follow-up question. If you haven't tasted macarons, try them. It's my secret tip to delicious, good experience. All right. Oh, yeah, global leader, pricey, is absolutely correct English, especially in spoken English. We often use the word pricey when it comes to speaking. All right, um, good question, good question. Yeah, pricey, spoken English, absolutely. It's natural, it's uh, idiomatic. All right, uh, students, is it worth the cost? <laughs> There's a good follow-up question. So <clears throat> one more time from the top. Certain types of candies and cakes can be very expensive. What do you think contributes to the high prices of some confectionaries? The reason for the high cost of some cakes and candies is due to the pricey ingredients, like natural vanilla and the extensive labor involved in making it. One such dessert that comes to mind are macarons. Thank you for the French for creating that dessert. Uh, is it worth the cost? Charlie Sen says... Well, in my opinion, it is definitely worth the cost because some of the raw ingredients are rare and expensive like honey, chocolate. Besides, the companies use modern tech to preserve them so that they last long. Okay, Charlie, sure. I think that's a good reason. Fahad says, something else makes the price uh, high, uh, import products um, like taxes so that normal candies and chocolates will become expensive. It's possible, Fud, but careful not to confuse the listener. What are you talking about? So I'm paying for import costs? Maybe. Amira Sadek says, yes, they are really yummy. Yes, Amira, macarons are really yummy. Okay, Pedram says, absolutely. If they are made of high-quality, healthy ingredients, it's definitely worth it. They have a low percentage of fat and sugar, yet they taste phenomenal. There's an L, Pedram, after the A. All right, very good. Quadwo, Quadwo, Asare, Awusu says, Well, I reckon come kinds of cakes and confectionaries are pretty pricey because they are uniquely customized for special celebrations and events, such as birthdays and wedding anniversaries and so forth. All right, don't use so forth, Quadwo, just finished with, and wedding anniversaries. These custom cakes can cost hundreds and even thousands of dollars. Okay, give some quantitative language. GD says, in my opinion, they are well worth the cost, but only occasionally as a special treat. Right, GD? Very good. Violeta Castro Prades says, I think if you want the good experience, the price will be worth it. 
mostly if they are made with high quality ingredients. Rajveer Singh, our member, says, in my opinion, it is worth the cost, as I had just said, that such companies have to use natural ingredients. Also, they have to spend on the advertising as well. Good point, Rajveer. A lot of overhead costs in making good, delicious sweets and letting people know that they exist. Great. Rajveer Vora says, yes, with proper measurement of ingredients and expertise lab expert labor involved i bet the final product is definitely worth the cost is it worth the cost absolutely even though some candies like famous macarons can be as costly as five dollars a bite it is worth every penny since anyone who has had a true French macaron would say you've just had a bite of heaven all right, there's some nice, natural, idiomatic, expressive language for you. Uh, is it worth the cost? Absolutely. Even though some candies, like famous macarons, can be as costly as $5 a bite, not a bit, a bite, it is worth every penny since anyone who has had a true French macaron would say you've just had a bite of heaven. All right. Express yourself. Link your ideas. Hey, if I talked about macarons here, why not continue with that and follow up? That's what the examiner is looking for. They're looking for detail. They're looking for continued language, for depth. Okay? Reach for depth. When you're practicing, you're speaking at home, Always ask yourself, especially with these follow-up questions, did I connect? Is there cohesion among my ideas? Are they connected? Or am I just saying a new different idea for each answer? You shouldn't be, okay? So this is a big tip, okay? When you are practicing for speaking at home before your exam, you should ask yourself, are my answers related? Are they connected? Or am I introducing a new idea each time I answer? Okay, ideally, you're connecting, okay? As much as possible. Okay, so you want to connect. Connect, 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 okay? Check yourself, check yourself, all right? Let's do a little bit more. Let's talk about making food. Let's talk about making food. Now, if the examiner introduces another idea to you, like let's talk about making food, that usually means you're doing well, your fluency is nice, you've given some clear answers, and the examiner feels confident that they can ask you some more questions and get into some deeper discussion. So. How have food preparation practices improved over the decades? So how have food preparation practices improved over the decades? Again, this is a present perfect question. All right. All right. Shravan Prince says, in my opinion, it is worth the cost because they will make the product with proper ingredients and professional labor involved. Not only that, but also the taste of the product 
is delicious. Shravan, that was for the last question. That was a good answer. Nice use of correlative conjunctions. Okay. All right. For Dobbs says, for Dobbs Nabyev says, yes, meal preparation practices have developed for the last few decades. There are many new technologies that can help people during preparation, like uh, convection ovens and electric steamers. Okay, for Dobbs, good. Convection oven. Convection oven is the type of oven that blows air around and around, so you get a more even heat distribution. It's called a convection oven. Okay. Amit Sega says, nowadays, fast food has become a hobby. Okay, Amit realized that that was probably off target. You're right, Amit. Uh, Charlie says, well, food preparation procedures have improved drastically over the decades. Nowadays, people use lots of well-designed, high-tech kitchen robots, okay, or kitchen appliances, like blenders, which they didn't have years before. Yeah, very good, okay. So with uh, advancements in kitchen appliance technology like improved blenders and kitchen robots, so too has the have the practices or the practice of meal preparation got better. So with advancements in kitchen appliance technology like improved blenders and kitchen robots, so too have the practice of meal preparation got better. Nowadays, it takes less time to make better meals. My mom used to take over an hour to bake a loaf of bread when I was a child. But now, with her bread maker, she only needs to spend about 10 minutes of her time. All right. I don't know if any of you have seen those bread making machines, but hey, that's definitely helped a lot, right? Back in the day, you used to have to mix all of the ingredients for the bread by hand, mix it, knead it, let it rise. It would take a long time. Now you take all the ingredients, throw it into the bread maker, close the lid, set the button. A few hours later, your bread is done. All right, so visualize, visualize. Um, Rajveer Singh says, food preparation uh, has been revolutionized in the last 10 years. These days, people use state-of-the-art uh, of equipment to prepare food, like expensive bread makers. Violetta says, the preparation of food has improved by adding more formal education. Nowadays, people don't just follow recipe, but they use the innovation to create new recipes, such as molecular foods. Violetta, very creative, I like it, okay? Priti Yogi, our member says, yes, food preparation process has changed over the decades due to advanced technology. Nowadays, the election of products like microwave ovens prepare food in less time and it reduces work. Very nice answer, just watch the grammar a little bit, I corrected there, okay? Mohammed. Chawak says, well, sometimes people can find higher quality candies. They're delicious and they're worth it. But, however, you can eat bad quality candy as well. Mohammed, I'm not sure where you're going with it. You want to rethink that. Amira says, as technology has been improved day by day, so too have food preparation processes advanced. The advent of new kitchen appliances, such as Kitchen processing machines save time and energy to prepare quality meals. Amira, 
check the time, 44 minutes, some upgrades to your response, but a very nice, strong foundation. Roshni Kunte says, yes, absolutely. It has changed tremendously over the past 10 years. These days, people prepare more healthy and simple foods like having DAL and rice because it's tasty and easy using new technology. Okay, Roshni, I'm pretty sure that's what you wanted with that tea. It's good. All right, nice. Nicely done, students. Lots of different quality answers. Okay. Has there been any change for the worse? That's the follow-up, okay? So has there been any change for the worse in food preparation over the past years? Give me a nice full sentence answer for that one. Ferdov says, yes, absolutely. It has also been transformed for the worse in some cases. What I mean is that many TV shows contribute to people preparing meals as quickly as possible, uh, which are not even cooked long enough to kill viruses like the coronavirus. Okay. Dead Man Fury says, I think different culinary traditions in cooking and food preparation content in order to achieve the intended outcome has become worse because a uh, dead man fury, I think you have a good beginning to what you want to say, but it's an incomplete idea and sentence. So you definitely want to uh, complete that. I see that you have some continuation there. They must be able to carry out techniques safely and combine them into appealing meals. Not sure where you're going with that. So you have to clarify. Okay. Police crime says fast food may now be worse for our health. A new study warns data from the Center of Disease Control and uh, Prevention indicate that between 2015 and 20, 25 percent of adults in India. Uh, OK, I'm not sure where you're going with that police crime. The question is related. It's a follow up question. So how have food preparation practices improved over the decades? That's the first question. Has there been any changes for the worse? That's the follow-up question. Okay, so yes, I do think that because of the fast-paced life that many people lead, their cooking habits have also become worse, such as using the microwave to heat up food, which is known to destroy all nutritional value. As well, people are cooking hot meals less and eating cold food instead. Okay, so that would be a good answer. Uh, has there been any change for the worse? Yes, I do think that because of the fast paced life that many people lead, their cooking habits have also become worse. Notice how here my sentence structure is quite interesting. I give the reason first, because of the fast paced life that many people lead, their cooking habits have become worse. Okay, so right away I give reason and then I give explanation and example, such as using the microwave to heat up food, which is known to destroy all nutritional value. Okay, like vitamins, for example, as well. People are cooking hot meals less and eating cold food instead. Okay. All right, students. So that would be your high band answer. And I'm going to stop there. I'll leave the last question for you to think about. You can send me a recording and I'll let you know your band score. Some people say that the tradition of quality home cooked meals is slowly disappearing. Why is this? What can be done to encourage people to bake and cook more? 
How would it impact society if people cook more at home? So this is a three-part question. It's an exciting one for you to practice. Record it on your phone, an MP3. Send it to my email, and I'll send you back a score estimate. I'll let you know if that response would be a band five, six, seven, eight, or a perfect nine. You can send that response to Adrian at aehelp.com. Once again, I will be back on February 6th with more live classes, starting with speaking part one. Students, until then, check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general. On both of those websites, we have loads of materials to help you improve, including over 100 hours of HD video lessons where you get to actually see me in a nice lit high definition classroom. So check us out there. Um, thank you so much. I see all the thank yous coming through. This is the General Alts website here. Click that big red button to join the premium package. And here is the academic at aehelp.com. Click that big red button to join us there. A big, you're welcome back to you, Fahad, in Morocco. I hope that all of you have a great next week, and I look forward to seeing you again next uh, Thursday for speaking part one. Luxmi, love back at you in Nepal. You're all brilliant people. Keep going. Keep pushing forward. Believe in yourselves. We are wired to communicate, socialize, and learn language. Remember that. Bye for now from the heart of Europe, Hungary, Budapest.